So as I've said, today is the second Sunday of Advent, and the theme for today is prepare the way. So before I go to my home, I would just like to ask, how many of you have seen the video of the unfrozen caveman lawyer? Can you raise your hand? <laughs> okay. So this is very funny because uh, this unfrozen caveman, it's being shown on sat Saturday Night Live. Okay, so you could watch it on YouTube. And there it says there that, you know, this caveman uh, from 100,000 years ago, um, what happened there is that, you know, he fell into a crevice and then he got frozen. Okay, and this is his line, uh, this unfrozen caveman lawyer. He always says this, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm just a caveman. I fell on some ice and later got towed out by some of your scientists. Your world frightens and confuses me. It's so funny, you w w watch the video. And uh, so what happened there, of course, this, this is a caveman who, 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 who likes being in the cave, but he fell to a cre cre crevasse, and then because of that, he got frozen, right? And because of that, uh, he was not able to get the sunlight, right? got frozen and he needed to be towed out by by the scientists and be exposed to the sun and and because of that you know he he came back to life and then he became a lawyer okay so that that's the that's the premise of that and I don't know if you remember two Sundays ago I was talking about making a campfire right and I talk about the, the importance of fire, okay? And fire is very important. It gives us warmth, and it gives us um, light, and it's also, uh, we could use that for, for, for cooking. Now, fire, you could also make fire out of the sun, okay? And uh, if, you, if, you, if you see that there, just use a magnifying glass. I don't know if you've used this in, in your science class, where you use a magnifying glass, where the sun rays there, the incident rays will go through the magnifying glass, and then it will go through the, the, the piece of paper, and then there will be fire that come out. That's the power of the sun, okay? And uh, so, as, as we know, sun is very important, okay? Especially, uh, you know, during winter, right? It's so easy for us to uh, just go into our cave. Maybe I'm speaking with, with uh, especially with the men here. Uh, we, I think we have our own man cave. I, my man cave here in the rectory is uh, the exercise room and the storage room. And uh, that's where I like to hang out. And, uh, but we all know that we need to go out, okay? Sun is very important because if we don't go, go out, we could easily get this press. And there's, there's something about the sun that gives warmth to our heart, not just, you know, a, a warm temperature, but a warmth to our heart, okay? And uh, uh, that's why, you know, if, if we're lacking being exposed to the sunlight, our family doctor will prescribe to us to take vitamin D. And they say, you know, it's good to take 1,000 to 2,000 IU or international unit, okay? Uh, so that it will help compensate for the lack of sun. So, sun is very important. And sun, as I've said, could be used to make fire, okay? And uh, so, also, uh, I don't know if you, if, if you remember, uh, we're doing this Operation Hearts on Fire, and for us to catch that fire, we need to go to the source of that fire which is the sacred heart of Jesus. I, I mentioned that in my, in my homily two weeks ago. But when we encounter Jesus, we're not just encountering Jesus. We're also encountering God the Father and the Holy Spirit because they're three in one, the Holy Trinity. Okay? And St. Augustine would uh, think of something that would really explain to people the... the the oneness of the Trinity, but also the, the, the uniqueness of the three person. 
And he uses the analogy of the sun. The sun itself represents God the Father. The light of the sun represents Jesus Christ, our Savior. And the heat of the sun represents the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the love and the power of God. Okay? And we see here, this person is exposed to the sun, to the light, and to the heat. If this person is inside the home, he will not be exposed to the sun. Now, in today's gospel, St. John the Baptist is, you know, is preaching and, uh, and, and exhorting the people to prepare the way of the Lord. And, 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 Jesus, and it's quoting from Isaiah. It says there, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make his straight path. Okay? So we're called to prepare the way of the Lord. And as I've said, you know, we're doing this uh, Hearts on Fire operation, and we're now on the first 40-day journey, which started from uh, the Christ the King Sunday, November 22, to the Solemnity of Mary, Mother of God, which is on January 1st. And the theme of that is encounter. We need to encounter the Lord so that we will be able to catch that fire. Now, the thing is, what are, what are those that are blocking? What are those that are obstacle for us to encounter the Lord? You know, it's, it's, like, it's like the caveman, right? What's the obstacle for him to experience the heat and the light of the sun? He was frozen. That's the obstacle for the, cave, the, uh, the unfrozen caveman lawyer. For us, what is the obstacle? What is blocking us from experiencing the love of Jesus in our life? I'd like to share with you Mother, Mother Teresa's last letter to, his, to, her, to her religious sisters. Uh, and he, she called this letter the I thirst for you letter. So as I read this letter, I would like you to imagine that this letter is being read to you. Okay? So this is what Mother Teresa wrote. Jesus wants me to tell you again how much he has for each one of you beyond all you can imagine. I worry some of you still have not really met Jesus one-to-one, -one. you and Jesus alone. We may spend time in the chapel, but have you seen with the eyes of your soul how he looks at you with love? Do you really know the living Jesus, not from books, but from being with him in your heart? Have you heard the loving words he speaks to you? Ask for the grace he is longing to give it. Never give up this daily intimate contact with Jesus as the real living person, not just the idea. How can we last even one day without hearing Jesus say, I love you? Impossible. Our soul needs that as much as the body needs to breathe the air. If not, prayer is dead. Meditation, only thinking. Now, she continues, be careful of all that can block that personal contact with the living Jesus. The devil may try to use the hurts of life and sometimes our own mistakes to make you feel that it is impossible that Jesus really loves you. This is a danger 
for all of us. Not only that he loves you, but even more, he longs for you. He misses you when you don't come close. He thirsts for you. He loves you always, even when you don't feel worthy, when not accepted by others, even by yourselves sometimes. He is the one who always accepts you. Beautiful letter. The question, you know, what she's t- stating at here is that be careful. I would like to repeat this. Be careful of all that can block that personal contact with the living Jesus. And what are those? I'm sure you could answer that question, right? What are those? It could be business. It could be fear. It could be anxiety. It could be resentment. It could be, um, you know, uh, sports or entertainment, social media. It could be our attachment to things, to persons. It could be our addictions, whatever that is. Those are blocking us from encountering the Lord. Now, share with you one thing that is really going to block us from the Lord, that is sin. Now, sin, despite our sin, the Lord never stopped loving us. He continues to love us. But sin acts like a fire extinguisher. You're experiencing the love of God in your life. You know, there's fire. And then sin, you commit sin, boom. You extinguish the fire. Okay? And uh, the thing is, because sin, we put ourselves first before God and others. And sin is not just disobeying rules or commandments. Sin is the opposite of love. And when you sin, you disconnect yourselves from the source of love. Okay? That's why the opposite is also, is, is also true. When you live in obedience, when you're following the commandments of the Lord, your heart will be set on fire. Okay? Now, so that's why, that's why, uh, that's why Jesus tells us, you know, you know in, in the gospel, uh, the very first thing that he, he spoke is repent and believe in the good news. And that's what uh, St. John the Baptist also, when he appeared in the wilderness, that's what he was proclaiming. He was proclaiming a baptism for the, f- uh, a baptism for the forgiveness of sins, a baptism of repentance. Okay? So, Going back again to the letter of Mother Teresa, this is what she wrote. She continues in her letter. How do you approach the thirst of Jesus? Only one secret. The closer you come to Jesus, the better you will know his thirst. Repent and believe, Jesus tells us. What are we to repent? Of course, our sins, right? But she says, our indifference, our hardness of heart. What are we to believe? Jesus thirsts even now in your heart and in the poor. The thing is, sin, it's like being the unfrozen caveman lawyer, frozen in that ice, right? That's what sin could do do to you. It would make your heart cold, heart, that's the heart that you would have when you're living in sin. That's why the Lord is calling us to repentance and to have faith in Him. Okay? Now, how do we come before the Lord? Of course, as I've said, we need to repent from our sin. But we also need to take time 
to pray. So this book that we're giving out this Advent uh, called I Heard God Laugh, okay? And, uh, and this book, is, it, it's, it's only 110 pages. You could read this in, in, in one week. I, I finished reading it in one week, okay? And, and the book talks about the importance of prayer, the why, the how, and the what. It also talks about, of course, the importance of laughter, okay? And uh, because we, I highly encourage all of you to read this book because especially for us, many people are struggling with prayer, okay? So this book is a very good book for you to pray, to be able to pray. And prayer is the door for you to encounter the Lord. Without prayer, that door will always be locked, will always be closed. You won't be able to encounter the Lord. That's why we all need to pray. And Jesus promised in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, it says, if you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. That's the promise of Jesus, okay? So the challenge that I'm giving to you is that read this book for a week and then give it away. Give it to someone that will benefit from this book. We've, somebody donated 250 books for this parish. Imagine if every week we're passing this book to another, we will see the miracle of the multiplication of this book. 250, 500, 1,000, 2,000. Souls that will benefit from this book so that they would encounter the Lord. So, Advent, we should not be so busy during Advent, okay? It's a time to reflect. It's a time to, to contemplate. It's a time for us to look into our hearts. What is blocking? What is an obstacle for me to encounter the Lord? And ask the Lord for that grace to be able to remove that obstacle so that you will be able to catch that fire enkindle that fire and share that fire to others.